archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. Gems on the necklace of Saraswati, goddess of learning, scholarship and riches, and a heritage of art, all expressed in this 18th century Tanjore painting. We are in Tanjore, which has now reverted to its historic name, Tanjavur. It is in the southern state of Tamil Nadu. Today, Tanjavur is a crowded city, and at first glance, it is not apparent that it has been a focal city for over 1,000 years. Dominating the city, however, is the magnificent Brihadeshwara temple, completed in 1010 AD. It stands today as a symbol of an empire which extended from the Ganga to Sri Lanka and from the Maldives to Burma and into Southeast Asia. The Vimana, or central tower, is half a brick short of 61 meters high. It is capped by an enormous stone said to weigh 81.28 tons. In the heyday of the temple, 200 dancing girls, reputedly, performed a ritual ballet every evening, carrying twinkling oil lamps and flowers. The carvings on the temple are as heroic as the king who commissioned them. Also powerful is this magnificent flag mast, cast and sculpted in metal and rising beside this monolithic black nandi, the traditional vehicle of Lord Shiva. So meticulous was this monarch that he had inscribed on the plinth of his temple accurate administrative instructions on how the temple should be managed. This makes the Brihadeshwara temple probably the most permanent and beautiful bureaucratic document in the world. Around the great temple are shrines built by later rulers. The 13th century Pandyas built the Aman shrine. Four hundred years later, the Nayaks raised this shrine to Subramania. Still later, 
the Maharatas constructed this Ganesh shrine. The Maharatas also had these paintings made in the gallery around the temple's court. The queen here looks like the queen on a pack of cards. The Brihadeshwar temple is not just part of the heritage of India. It is part of the heritage of mankind. Clearly, this temple was impressive even when it was a ruin. We found this print by one of the famed Daniel brothers in the superb Saraswati Mahal library of Tanjavur. The man who built up this excellent collection was the Maharatta ruler of Tanjavur, Serfuji II. He was also a linguist, a scholar and a great patron of the arts. Among the many collections on display in Serfuji's library are Charles Lebrun's human physiognomy charts, comparing human faces with their bird and animal archetypes. Haven't we met somewhere before? There are also these strips of miniature paintings illustrating the Ramayana. Much of Sarfaji's erudition could be ascribed to his tutor, Christian Frederick Schwartz. We visited the little church which Sarfaji had helped Schwartz build. It is still a living church. Very touchingly, at the end of the aisle, is a marble plaque showing the death of Schwartz on the 15th of February, 1798. Maharaja Serfaji was at his teacher's side when Schwartz died. This marble was raised by Sarfaji. Back in the old palace complex is another set of rooms dedicated to the recently opened Royal Museum. Here on display are exhibits of the life and times of the Maratha rulers. Sarfaji was also responsible for creating what is now known as the Raja Raja Chola Museum. It houses sculpture and bronze galleries. There are excellent sculptures like the one of Lord Shiva tearing the hide of the elephant demon. His fingers have pierced the dark beast's skin as he rips it apart. It would appear, however, that he wants Parvati to shield his son Subramanya from seeing his titanic anger. It also holds, reputedly, the most remarkable South Indian bronze collection in the world. It ranges from the 7th to the 20th century. Tanjavu's Brihadeshwara inspires people in different ways, as we learned from visitors Nandini Iswar, who won a state award for dancing, engineer Varuna, and his cousin Maya. The um, sculptors I saw in that Brihadeshwara temple, the um, many poses of Shiva you know, can be just uh, inculcated in the dance form. And being an engineer, right, it's really something wonderful to see the way it has has been constructed. The one thing that really struck me was, was the magnificence of the temple. Just to imagine that at that time, something of that magnitude was built and done is something hard to believe. We had first seen them standing in front of the sculptures of the wives of the forest seers, or rishis, 
and Lord Shiver and his goblin horde of gunners. That group of figures was originally in the Airavatishwara temple in Darasuram, 36 kilometers from Tanjavur. Tanjavur district is the rice bowl of Tamil Nadu, a fertile land whose farming families have enriched the region for centuries. Out of this wealth grew Darasuram, ascribed to the Chola king Raja Raja II, who ruled in the second half of the 12th century, it is a bit the worse for wear. It is, however, being restored by the Archaeological Survey of India. The temple is built like a chariot. The Mandap Hall is enriched with carvings. Many of these carvings depict martial activities. The Chola Empire extended to the islands of Southeast Asia and the frontiers had to be defended. The sculptures and other panels tell many of the stories of the Saiva poet saints, the Nine Mars. We met the retired and spry temple priest S. Pichai, an encyclopedia of information. He related the story of a child who had been swallowed by a crocodile. For three years, the child's mother mourned the loss of her child. One day, she met Sundaramurthy, a devotee of Lord Shiva. Sundaramurthy prayed to Shiva. The crocodile came out, opened the mouth. The child came out with life. Mother received her child and went home happily. He then drew a parallel with a well-known biblical tale. This story is parallel to Jonah and the whale. The most beautiful images in this temple are made of black basalt. There are also interesting, though rather faded, paintings in a few niches. Returning past the Kaveri to our base in Tanjivur, we stop to look at the 8-meter-long Rajagopal cannon. Reputedly a war trophy from Bijapur, it might have been melted down by the British had a Maratha prince not intervened. A former Maharatha palace has become a state-run hotel with such rooms offered at 400 rupees AC double. A private hotel offers top-of-the-market rooms at 1,150 rupees AC double. Thanjavur is well connected by rail. It is also well served by road. The nearest airport is at Trichy, 55 kilometers away. Visitors to Tanjavur often shop for Tanjo glass paintings. Visitors also look for handmade Tanjo plates. These plates have figures embossed in bronze and silver and are inserted into a brass base. Prices start at around 30 rupees for the smallest ones and soar upwards depending on size.
traditional Tanjo paintings are resplendent treasures. Created through a painstaking process and embedded with semi-precious stones, these paintings are jewel bright. Master craftsman Venkateshwar Raja applies rare gold leaf made from membrane thin gold to create his paintings. His subjects are always his clients' favorite gods and goddesses. We left the little street where Venkateshwar Raja lived and worked. We drove out of Tanjabur. The shrines of three major religions lie near Tanjabur, often attracting the same pilgrims. Stone carvers were working on a new gate tower for the temple at Tirunalla, 113 kilometers from Tanjabur. master craftsman sketched a woman. A graceful figure emerged on a granite slab. Though this is a Shiva temple, to the right of this flag mast is an important shrine to Saturn or Shani. He is regarded by many as the god who dispenses justice and thus a deity who needs to be placated to avoid the consequences of one's just deserts. The worship of Lord Shiva in Tamil Nadu gave rise to a famed line of 63 perts or nine mars. Their images, including that of the pertis Karekal Amayar, from this area are enshrined here. And this, if we accept local belief, is a statue of the great Chola king Raja Raja. Pilgrims to Tirunalar often visit the Darga of Hazrat Said Shahul Hamid Ali in Nagore. Nagore is 95 kilometers from Tanjabur and 21 kilometers from Tilunara. Born near Ayodhya in Uttar Pradesh in 1491, this Islamic savant came to Tamil Nadu early in the 16th century. People of many faiths believe that the saint continues to perform miracles even though he died in 1559. Pilgrims are blessed in front of this door to his tomb. Others express their reverence in other traditional ways. The shrine also holds the tomb of Hazrat Sayyid Muhammad Yusuf Sahib, successor to the saint and the man regarded as his son. The names of other descendants have been written in a tiled area which has a distinctly Iberian look about it. Here, as in some shrines of other faiths, 
devotees donate tokens of the boons that they are seeking or have received. Others give greater gifts. Lands and buildings have been gifted by the grateful. This great minaret, we were told, was built by the father of a Maratha king, Prathab Singh. Devotees also flock into another shrine in the same area, 98 kilometers from Tanjavu and 18 kilometers from Nagore. Here, the white basilica church of Velankani and other shrines commemorate legendary happenings ascribed to the 16th and 17th centuries. Devotees believe that all three miracles occurred on the birthday of the Mother of Christ, 8th September. One of these events happened here. Apparently, a boy carrying milk gave some of it to a beautiful woman and her baby, but the pot continued to remain full. Other unusual events involved the curing of a lame boy and the saving of a shipload of Portuguese sailors from a storm at sea. More recent happenings, regarded as miraculous cures by devotees, have been commemorated by numerous gifts offered by grateful people. Some of them are displayed in the Shrine Museum. We reached Valankani at the height of its annual feast. Devotees offered coconuts. Inside the Basilica Church, pilgrims from Maharashtra sang hymns in Marathi. Inside the church, there was an unending line of worshippers queuing up at the altar rails. Most of them believe that this statue of Our Lady of Health is a miraculous one an essential part of India's heritage. We must leave Velankani now and move on. Ahead lies the rest of this wondrous land. Ahead of us lie a myriad magical destinations beckoning. It is time for you and us to take a break. <laughs>